Welcome on the show. Really, like I say on a Friday morning, the weekend is here and rest is near. We never have rest over the weekends, though. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Now, I have um, different things to discuss on the show today, but one really doesn't make me like this weekend, really. I'll come with the story first and I'll introduce my guest to you, okay? Now, Bene coach Michael Dussier will, on March 16th, name his final squad for an African qualifier against the Super Eagles. I mean, serious fears he may not have several of his foreign based stars. No thanks to travel restrictions caused by the pandemic. Ben Republic head coach Michel Dussier will now count on local league stars for this month's 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifying games in Niger against Nigeria. And due to the unavailability of a member of his foreign based stars. Now, this year will be without several of his key stars after clubs in France announced they will not be releasing their players for international games outside Europe during the upcoming window. Now, Benet will host the Super Eagles on March 27th at the State Charles de Gaulle in Porto Novo and then face Les Soto three days later. Now, joining us live from on the show today is sports journalist and presenter Dele Oshidi Global. Good morning, Dele. Uh, good morning, Wale. Um, it's sad to note um, that um, this year is going to have to use um, home based players. And now we have consistently spoken to Raw. Why does Raw not want to look towards the way of our Nigerian based players? What is wrong with them? Post pandemic, no club wants to re re release their best players. Come back home then. Can you hear me, Dilly? Hello, Wally. Yes, I can. Hello, Wally. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, first of all, good morning, viewers. Nice to. Hear. Nice for you to have me on your program. Um, I begin to ask myself that um, uh, both of us and several of our colleagues have clamored for um, Delarose's involvement with our local league. That's an idea of professional football league. We made excuses for this man that because his games were not on TV, he didn't have access to the players. And then he claimed that he couldn't go out with certain games outside Lagos because of all the kidnapping going on around the country. Now, he's been availed the opportunity of seeing these players, yet he doesn't deem it fit to invite any player whatsoever. It means that he doesn't have any form of belief in our home-based players. Now, we know certain players have pulled out of these upcoming games, like the Lose's Daddy Simon, and a few other players won't honor the invitation because of COVID-19 protocols in their various countries. So the honor is on the coach and his coaching crew to do the needful. We can have a professional league and we don't see at least two, three players good enough to play for the senior national team. If Benner Republic can decide to use local based players to play against the survivors, why can't we do the same? I think, I think Dele, on this note, I want to believe that we all know that um, African football is rugged. There's, we play rugged football on the continent. Why bring Bota boys, where we have rugged boys in our league here, to actually make it happen for us? Why take that risk? Wally, we have wonderful players who play for the likes of Quarry United, Aimba, play to United, Cano Pillars. We have players who honor Chan tournaments. So unfortunately, we haven't been to Chan in a minute. But we know we have good enough players who can represent the country. You're talking about Bota players. I saw Leon Balogun play yesterday. It was typical Bota movement. He's not rugged. You can't put Leon Balogun up against this rugged African players. We have to look in deep. But really, I don't blame Gunnar Raw. I blame our football administrators. Stay with us. They don't go anywhere yet. Um, on the flip side now. Now, Tammy Abraham and Fikayo Tomori failed to make the England squad for the World Cup qualifiers after switching allegiance and snobbing Nigeria. Now, Tammy Abraham and Fikayo Tomori have failed to make the England squad for the World Cup qualifiers after switching allegiance and snobbing Nigeria. Chelsea striker Tammy Abraham was born in the UK to Nigerian parents, while AC Milan defender Fikayo Tomori was born in Calgary, Canada to Nigerian parents. But both turned down the chances of representing the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Now, did it? You were in England for a while. If you had a way, would you have picked the three Lions over the Nigeria? First off, first question there. there. Uh, well, let me, let, me, let me paint different scenarios for you now. Yeah. Um, the likes of Ifa Emegara was a wonderful footballer, never got to play for Nigeria. He played for Switzerland. David Alaba of Nigerian heritage did not play for Nigeria. He played for Austria. Okaka played for Italy. 
I can go on and on. Ross Barkley even has Nigerian descent in him. He plays for England. Bukayo Saka said of recent that Nigeria hasn't contributed whatsoever to his growth in football. So he'll rather play for England. Tammy Abraham said he has no business with Nigeria. Tammy Abraham right now is Indian. I guess that's why he wasn't invited. Fikayo Tamari just made a move to AC Milan, so maybe he's not really settled yet at AC Milan, but we saw him yesterday. Hey, let's face reality. I think um, these boys would rather identify with uh, countries where basic amenities are accessible. Uh, we know that the English FA will take care of these boys better than the way the NFF would, in let, all fairness. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me digress a bit. Our, the Tigers in basketball are number one in Africa. Our the Tigress at the moment in Africa. And what did they do? They were able to convince most Nigerian players abroad to come play for Nigeria. Now we are the best basketball team in Africa as we speak. And we can give anybody a run for their money. Don't these guys realize that in the past, Nigerian players have been called to the squad, used three or four times, and dumped eventually? Do they all want to go that way too? The Tigers and the Tigers have seasoned coaches, well-decorated coaches from the NBA, from the WNBA. Our uh, Super Eagles don't have a seasoned coach, in all, in all fairness. Um, uh, I, I don't think um, most of these players will show enough respect to Gunnar Raw. Maybe Stephen Kett should have stood a better chance than Gunnar Raw. Man-to-man -man management is different. I don't think Gunnar Raw has that. Nothing against Gunnar Raw, but that's my honest opinion. Wow. Okay, still with us, Dennis. Don't go anywhere. You're still with us on the, on the show. Now, France have recalled Barcelona forward Ousmane Dembele to their squad for the first time in over two years as Le Bleu jet off for World Cup qualifiers against Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Dembele, who has three goals in 21 La Liga appearances for Barca this season, won the last of his 21 caps and 2 0 defeat against the Netherlands in the Nations Cup in November 2018. Also back in the squad after a lengthy absence at Tottenham Hotspur's tank guy Dom Dombele and Atletico Madrid's Thomas Lemar. Dombele played his last game for France in June 2019, while fellow midfielder Lemar won his last cap in November last year. The world champions host Ukraine at the State de France on Wednesday before traveling to Kazakhstan on March 28th and Bosnia three days later. Now, Dele, when people talk about um, the French Le Bleu, they say it reminds them of an African team. And the Super Eagles remind them of a British team, really, because half our team is half cast. And everybody in the Loblo team is practically African. Paul Pogba, Lemar, um, Ndombele, Ousmane Dembele. You know, but this is a country who is bringing in foreigners without fear or favor. And they've won the World Cup with these same foreigners last World Cup. Wally, the coach of the Loblo is Didier Deschamps the last time I checked. Yeah. The coach of the Super Eagles is Galar Raw. Yeah. They have <laughs> different pedigrees. Yeah. Going back to the players you mentioned, Usman Dembele has had his injury worries over the past three years. For well over three years, he's been in and out of surgical tables and all whatnot. Um, I'm happy he's making a return back to the senior national team. All well and good for him. He needs to get his mojo back. He's a pretty decent player, very quick, um, uses both feet, quite intelligent. Um, I can only wish him all the best. Um, talking about, uh, who else did you mention? Lemar, Ndombele. Yeah, Ndombele, yes. Ndombele, um, I remember when Jose Mourinho joined uh, Tottenham Hotspur, he told Ndombele that he could play way better than the way he was playing. And then he put him on the bench for a while until he found his feet. Uh, whether we like it or not, he's one of the best players at Tottenham, but I think the whole Tottenham team has a major problem. No doubt. I'm talking about Lemar. Lemar, who was once rated as a hundred million pound footballer, um, hasn't lived up to expectation in all fairness. Uh, but making moves to Atletico Madrid, I guess um, he's beginning to find his form back. And joining the senior national team, he's going to play alongside the likes of Paul Pogba, Ungolo Kante, Varane. So we expect him to up his game. When he plays the best, he only gives the best. Okay, coming, to, coming back to what you said a few minutes ago. Touch them. Obviously, have a problem. They are eighth in the Premier League and out of Europe. <laughs> Next month's League Cup final could be the only chance to salvage something from their season. Jose Mourinho apologized to the Tottenham fans and said his players failed at the basics of life. After they threw away a 2-0 lead to be knocked out of the Europa League by Dynamo Zagreb. 
Then this is the funny part of it. Dynamo Zagreb last week or two weeks ago lost to Tottenham when they had a coach. Then the coach was sentenced to jail. And then he ran, the, the director of sports, who is the coach's brother, ran away. So the assistant coach actually stood in for Zagreb in that match. And everybody thought that they had problems in the, in the club, they could not win. And they beat Tottenham 3 0. What is the problem with Mourinho? Um, I think it goes beyond Mourinho. Um, I, I can't remember the last time Mourinho had a two goal lead and squandered it. It goes beyond the coach. I think the whole team is a problem. Um, if you read tweets from various fans concerning this game, everyone is asking for Marino's head, blah, blah, blah. But the captain has come out to his rescue. That was Hugo Lloris, the goalkeeper, who said the players, the team lacked commitment. They're not together. He said most of the players, once they're not in the starting 11, they can't be bothered about what's happening on the field. Moreno can only give orders and directives. He can go on the field and play football. I don't understand how they squandered a two-goal lead. All they needed to do was score at least one goal, and they missed it. Anyways, I knew from the weekend that once someone picked up that injury, I knew that Tottenham will be in crisis. Kane already got a brace in the first leg, and it was a shadow of himself yesterday. Very, very sad. I feel so sorry for the team and Jose Moreno. It's sad that um, ever since he left, what, Inter Milan, Real Madrid, he's just been going down the ladder. His time at Manchester United was terrible. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just sad. I just feel so sorry for him. You are one of the very few people who has this impression that Son, Hyung Min, is actually the ignition of Tottenham going up front. And if he's not there, nothing for them. Scott proved that Son is an integral part of the Tottenham setup. Kane is a better player once you mean son is playing. Everybody knows that. In terms of assists, goals, work rates, completed dribbles, the way he tracks back, the way he helps the defenders, son is very, very important. At the point in time, I thought he was the best footballer in the English Premier League. So it's a big miss for Tottenham. Now, um, I'll come back to you daily again. Um, I didn't see this coming. I'm a big Manchester United fan, but I didn't see this coming. Paul Pogba, I didn't see this coming. Returned from injury to send Manchester United into the Europa League quarterfinals. And manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says the midfielder will continue to make a big impact in the final stages of the season. There was no Edison Cavani. There was his Zlatan Ibrahimovic for AC Milan. I saw it going to AC Milan all the way. Second half, Pogba comes in and I hiss. And he comes and scores the goals. Dele, I didn't see Cavani. He was injured. He didn't, was not only playing with them. I saw Zlatan on the bench and I was scared. This was the end of Man U's journey in the Europa League. And then Pogba comes in second half and I hiss when I see him coming. And he comes to score the goal. It took Paul Pogba three minutes to deliver. He came on as a substitute in the second half. And he banged in the winner for Manchester United. Um, I knew Zlatan was quite short for this match. It wasn't 100%, so I wasn't expecting much. But you can't take away the leadership qualities and the X factor in Zlatan Ibrahimovic. For me, yesterday, the match between Manchester United and AC Milan was the most exciting because it was end to end football, both teams looking for goals. Um, we have to face reality that AC Milan have a whole lot of injury worries. I can count at least four players who are out injured, who are first team players. But it's sad. Injuries are part of football. Manchester United was a better team on the night and um, they advanced to the next round. Now, Dele, can we say this is the advantage of having a big, a large squad? Um, a, a big team, most big teams are very large squads. Uh, Man City, for instance, and put out their second team to play against, uh, let's say, Arsenal's first team. No, no disrespect. Um, once you have a large squad, trust me, you can go around. The reason why Liverpool have issues right now is, and they thought they had a large squad. Unfortunately, their fringe players haven't lived up to expectations. We can see what Chelsea is doing right now. Certain players are on the bench, and those who are playing, who are starting for the team, 
are playing relatively well. So for you to be a table topper, a force to reckon with, in club football, you need a big squad. Okay, let me digress a bit before I go to the next story. Now, Liverpool have had problems in the Premier League, but are doing quite, quite well outside the league. Now, would you say a large squad? Because Firmino was out and quickly a Jota was brought in and he's doing quite well. How would you blame a, a, a depleted squad to Liverpool's um, chances in the Premier League? Um, I think uh, Liverpool go into um, Europe with a different dimension, with a different plan. And then in the league, I think they've lost it. I think they have nothing to play for. So I, just, I think they're just other matches in the league. Um, they're not motivated to go all out anymore in the English Premier League, but they know they still stand a chance in the AFL championships. Like you said, the team is depleted. But for me, I don't believe in excuses. Like I said earlier, injuries are part of football. Uh, Man City lost Laporte at the beginning of last season, and we know how that affected them. This season, Liverpool lost to Matip, Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez, uh, Keita, a couple of players, and it really affected them. It could, we could tell that the minute van Dijk was out of that team, it was a big problem for them. So I'll say Liverpool have the luck in Europe, but in the league, they haven't. And um, they've been making this excuse that uh, because they don't have fans back at the Xavier Stadia, it's affected the team. Excuse me, it's not just Liverpool. Every other team is affected. So, um, and I think um, they're burning out. Uh, okay. Liverpool have tried three years at the very top, got into about three or four finals. Hey, you need to put some respect on that name, Wally. Okay, now Arsenal were given a scare by Olympiakos, but had enough from the first leg to beat the Greek side on aggregate, at which the Europa League lost eight. Leading 3-1 from the game in Greece, the Gunners were comfortable throughout the first half in London. Some nerves began to show after Yusuf El Arabi's shot fell the net via deflection of Gabriel to give the visitors hope of repeating. Losses in shock when they knocked the Gunners out of the Europa League in the last 32 by scoring in the final minutes of extra time at the Emirates Stadium. Now, Dele, something is fundamentally wrong with Arsenal players, not Arteta, the players. You have a 3-1 league and you stroll into that match feeling like you've won already. They are always doing that. Arsenal have a major lead and they feel like we've won already. And then the team, other team comes back. Shouldn't there be, be, be psychologists working on that attitude? You, you think you've won because you, you have a, a large lead. And it shows in your play that you think you've won. Okay, well, I, I like the, I, I take from the um, Chima angle of what you just said. For me, I feel a bookmaker would have had issues yesterday because nobody would have thought Olympiacos would defeat Arsenal away. No one would have thought Tottenham would squander a two-goal lead. So a whole lot of results went haywire yesterday. We're talking about Arsenal. Um, for me, um, when Arsenal was Arsenal, Arsenal played the best of the best. Arsenal played at least five captains of five different nations at the same time. They were the best of the best. I don't think the caliber of players who play for Arsenal deserve to wear the red and white of Arsenal. Um, Arteta, uh, this is his biggest challenge ever with Arsenal. What was he, an assistant coach before? And now he's a pro coach. We need to give him time to grow. Um, these players can do more than what they can. Um, David Lewis is old. It is he's in his 30s. Gabriel was bought from where? Aye, my brother. There, there's so much. This isn't the Arsenal we used to know. When Arsenal was Arsenal, they had the likes of Tony Adams, Martin Keown, Laurent, Winterborn, Gal Clichy, David Seaman, Patrick Vieira. These were household names. These were people that knew what to do at every point in time. This Arsenal, for me, is a makeshift team. Okay, now, um, you and I call this, this man Captain Fantastic. His name, Steven Gerrard, and his Rangers manager. He was left angry and upset after midfielder Glenn Kamara told him he was racially abused during his side's Europa League defeat by Slavia Praha. Now, Slavia's Andrei Kudela said something to Kamara while co covering his mouth and a melee in the final stages. And enraged the Rangers players who confronted Kudela and Gerard got involved with his opposite number. My player tells me he was racially abused, Gerard said. Now, Dele, Gerard would not lie. 
Uh, I don't think um, the, Liber um, the Rangers player would lie either. He said he was racially abused. When will all this end? Why will someone hate me because of the color of my skin? It was an ill-tempered match yesterday we saw, but in all fairness, I'm disappointed at Steven Gerrard because I felt he could have handled this in a better way. Racism has been involved in football or in sports for donkey years, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, we've, we've always said, learn to develop a thick skin. Wally, we've had this conversation over and over. Yeah. Remember a story from primary school? Yeah. We won't go into that now, but hey, I remember a banana was thrown at Danny Alves. He picked it up, peeled it, ate the banana, and threw the skin away and continued playing. I've seen Balotelli break down when he was racially abused. I've seen Kevin Prince go out there, break down when he was racially abused. So, hey, people have different ways of handling things. I understand um, the um, lad from Slavia Pra was ruffled up a bit yeah. in the tunnel, and that's not good. That's really not good. That's not good for football. It's not something we, we should promote. It's something we should frown at. Yeah, has it occurred to you that some of us might take this thing in different ways? I might take it like Eric Cantona and kick the guy in the, in the stands, and somebody else will just eat the banana and walk away. We're different people. Well, then, let's, learn, let's learn to preach peace. Two wrongs will make it right. Yeah, you're also forgetting that um, in England, past footballers fought against racism. And um, um, players like Paul Scholes, um, Gary and Phil Neville, and one of them, they are about 24, and one of them is actually Steven Gerrard fighting against racism in England. You can understand how we feel, how you felt when that happened. Wally, are you going to say because you're racially abused, you get to beat up everybody who comes your way? <laughs> no, it's wrong. What I'm saying is that two wrongs don't make it right. Yeah. I agree. Nobody can say I wasn't there if he was racially abused or not. But hey, if he claims he was racially abused and then he returned, you beat him up in the tunnel. Papa, both of you are guilty. Okay, Dele, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show this morning at a very short notice. Thank you very much, bro. You're welcome, Wally. Okay. Now, I had Dele Oshodi Glover, sports journalist and presenter, on the show this morning. And he was, I'm sure he was very explicit in his explanations on the different topics that we discussed. It's been Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. On a Friday morning, I call it the weekend is here and rest is near, as you Join us tomorrow, 11 to 12, on Plus Sports Special on Plus TV Africa. It's 11 to 12 tomorrow. Till then, my name is Wally Scott. Like I was advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.